about stuff. So I wanted to go back to, you talked yesterday about this party, the domino party that you had when you recorded the record. So you recorded in Miami, and did you fly immediately back to England? No, we didn't go. Well, after, yeah. Um, what, did, what did you say? After you guys recorded the record. Yeah, we went you back flew home. immediately back to England. We went back home. Were you still at Hurtwood Edge at that time? Yeah. Okay, so you had this party and all these people showed up, and this is the night that Patty came. Well, along. we weren't we weren't we in and out of Hurtwood because the reason we got the Domino flat was so we could uh, get out of Hurtwood Edge. <laughs> right, right. You know, so. But anyway, what I was going to say, I was going to ask you about the party that you guys had. This is the night that Patty says that she showed up by herself. Yeah. Okay. Were you aware that Eric was going to be playing this to her? Well, did yeah, you just we play knew. It out, did but, you play it out loud to everybody? It yeah, was like a listening yeah, party? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, it was a listening party. Everybody got to hear it. And that's why she was a bit freaked out, like everybody's going to know it's about me. I don't know about all that, but, um, you know, it was, that was when everybody got to hear it. Yeah. Were you aware if of the fact If anybody was that, listening, <laughs> because it was a party. Were you aware of the fact that what was going on between the two of them? Well, yeah, everybody knew it. Everybody knew what it was all about as far as him and uh, uh, Patty. When you say everybody, you mean everybody in the band and that's Everybody, of period, who knew anything about it, about them, knew that their Eric was uh, had this thing about George's wife. Oh. So did, were you there when, when oh, you were there? It was playing and everything, and so... Was Eric sitting with Patty and and? I don't remember all if he was sitting with Patty or probably not, because everybody was up and about milling around and having drinks and nobody was really listening to anything. Like I said, it was a party. Yeah. So my impression was that he brought it back and then he played it to her privately and then all this. I don't know. He may have done that, but I, not that wasn't around me. I don't know any part about that. So, and this party, did it, it went on all night long? All or? night long, and uh, Stigwood was the last person to leave. I stayed. <laughs> of course, I lived upstairs. Right, right. But uh, Stiggy was the last one to leave. Right. And so, do you remember when Patty left? No. I don't even remember her getting there. It was a party. It was right, a, right. People milling in and out and going out and out the front door, and that was just all there was to it, you know. Hmm, I was just curious, yeah. you know. <clears throat> so, uh, Stigwood was there. How, how was that? It guys... would have been fine if I'd have conducted myself a little better. <laughs> you know, uh, I've been a little more understanding about it, you know. Was that the night that y you didn't do anything that night, did you? That was the very night that, uh, that we uh, had our crosswords, uh -huh. me and Robert Stigwood. He was trying to get me to, uh, you know, be a record executive. Get out of here. <laughs> I know, you can't even go shopping. Forget about being a record executive. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway. Bobby's not well known for his paperwork, are you? <laughs> There's a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of nonsense I could talk about, but it's it's what it is in nonsense about Robert Stigwood. I can't, you know. I'm sure everybody was he knows. excited about the record. Huh? He was your he was your your manager. Was he excited about the record? Did everybody he like the was record? excited about the record. Yeah, I mean everybody was hu hugely disappointed that it didn't nothing happened with it. Well, when you were recording, did you have any people showing up and and you know listening? No, to hell no. We didn't have anybody showing up. No one was allowed in the sessions. No. You said K Poor Boy was there. It's the only person that was allowed there. K Poor Boy is the only person, and the, and the only woman. Uh, no one was allowed there. You don't see any other people. There are no other people. The only people. Closed sessions. The only people who were, who was at the Layla sessions are in the fold out. You'll see everybody's picture there. Did you take those photos, or wh who took I those? I took all the pictures I'm not in, except for the very, very back, and that's some guy from New York. But uh, I dumped all the cigarette butts and stuff all over the photo, <laughs> you know, or the, <clears throat> the arrangement that he had. Right. 
They wanted it to be real, and that made it really real. But I made it a little too real because they had to do a bunch of picking up, cleaning up. So is that are those the original photos <laughs> on the back of the record? What were those the original photos on the back of the record and? On the, in, in, in the open thing, yeah, we did it with uh, one of those Polaroid uh, or Instamatic. Instamatics or something that where it spit the pictures out. You take it and you spit it out, and you'd have to wait for a little while, right? You know, and for it to develop, and then you peel the thing off, and then it kind of did that. Right. That's how we did it, and we uh, took all. It was Robin Turner who worked for Stigwood's office. Uh, he took the other photo. There's a picture of him in there too. But uh, he took all the ones that I didn't take. Uh, we took it back to the hotel room. My, my head's screwed up, so I can't hear in my ear. Took it back to the hotel room and laid it, laid it on a cardboard, piece of cardboard, about this big. And just took the pictures and started placing them where we wanted to. So, oh, now that'll be better over here. And so we did all that, put a little piece of tape behind each picture, folded it up, and it went back to the office and they reproduced it from that. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's how it went down. So, how long did it take to record the record? Two weeks. Four hours a day, two weeks, yeah. solid. Yeah. Did you, have, you had some time off, right? We had some time, intermittent time, but uh, uh, it was two weeks. It was no no time to record. I mean, when Dwayne came, all that stuff was pretty much live, you know, key to the highway, nobody knows you when you're down and out. That was live. So uh, we didn't have to do anything to those two. And the only other stuff that Dwayne, uh, aside from Layla, uh, um, um, any day, some parts that had to be worked out, you know, uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix song, you know, Little Wing, and that's the one, only really ones that we had any time, uh, there was a lot of overdubbing, except Keep On Growing, Eric overdubbed like four or five guitars on that, Right. but, uh, so that, wasn't, do, that wasn't that wasn't at all. Was Little Wing done as a tribute to Jimi Hendrix? Yeah, because Eric is all big on Jimi Hendrix, and uh, but that was before he died, you know. So. Right. So when after you had this, I'm going back to the party. After you had the party and this thing just apparently didn't go down well. Was it? Was it? like almost immediately that you could see a difference in Eric's attitude or was things just, how'd that go? I don't know about all that, his attitude and everything, because I wasn't paying much attention to his attitude. Could pretty much care less about all that. Uh, you everything, guys, uh, I, all I can say to, is everything, down? after we got finished recording the record and it was released and it didn't go anywhere, we went straight into the studio, you see, which we shouldn't have done, to try another one. And there was a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot of paranoia. Um, Jim Gordon was trying to run the show and it became a competition between him and Eric and everything just went downhill quicker than the Jamaican bobsled team. It was just real fast. Everything went down. So when did you do your shows, though? You guys went out on the road? What? After the record was done, you went out on the road? <laughs> yeah, well, we had, to, we had to. That was what we were doing. And Stigwood didn't want to really push that record. No, they did whatever they had. They did whatever they had to do. To, it just wasn't, nobody wanted to hear it. They wanted to hear cream and, and stuff like that. They didn't weren't interested in real songs and real singing, you know. And so what, that whole uh, that whole record, nobody nobody really give a shit about the Layla record until Dwayne Almond was dead, and uh, the band had broken up, you know. I mean, a year or two later, nobody really cared at all. I mean, uh, Eric went into uh, seclusion doing a bunch of smack. And uh, Stigwood just went ahead and put out the history of Eric Clapton. So 
So that's <laughs> why well, we figured it was all over. We put a history album out. He said he was selling guitars and and he was and he sold all of his guitars for Smack and Stigwood bought them all back. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, he, it, he got so down that he was selling his guitars, every damn one of them. He borrowed a Stratocaster of mine just to play. I guess he, uh, I went and got it back <laughs> from him because I, I said I'm going to America to play. I need my guitar, and so. Well, when you guys went it. out and played, I mean, it was a, it was pretty good times for you. Didn't you like that? You enjoyed that, didn't you? Oh, it was great. P playing on the road was great. I mean, but so that how, was before how did you travel? The, that was before everything started uh, imploding. How did you travel? <laughs> uh, coach and in taxi cabs and rental cars. That was it, and we didn't stay in five-star hotels or anything. We just stayed in a normal hotel, Holiday Inns, and we didn't. No, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't an extravagant uh, outlay. Uh, uh, we had uh, a road manager and two roadies. Right. That was it. Uh, we would see Bill and Clark. Bill Russell uh, 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 and, and oh, what was Clark's last name? Bill Reed and Clark Russell. And uh, Clark Russell wound up working for Ricky Nelson and went down in an airplane with him. But um, uh, we would see them at the show, and then they'd load up after we got through playing. So we'll see you in Milwaukee, and they would take off driving. And they'd drive through the night to get to wherever it was, and then when we get to wherever it was, they would have everything set up for us, and we'd do a sound check and go back to the hotel. Come do the gig. They would tear it down. Take off. So uh, uh, you you had mentioned one time before that you literally picked up people off the street to uh, work for you. Yeah, there was a guy uh, when we when we really were just getting together. Um, it was Bruce McCaskill was our, our roadie road manager. He worked with Cream as well, but he worked for the office Stigwood's office and. Um, we were going, I, I want to say it's a speakeasy, but uh, we needed somebody to uh, help pick up the organ. And there was this guy standing there with a long hair and a beard, and Bruce McCaskill said, you want to uh, get in here tonight, and I, 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 I'll let you in, just give me a hand with this. And um, he got the business end of the organ, and they set it up, and from then on, Baz Ward became Eric's guy, his, he worked for us forever, and then he worked for Eric even longer than that, he, only until a few years ago that he uh, quit because he was Eric's guitar guy for years and years and years and years, decades. That's great. Yeah, off the street. Yeah. He got the dream gig of a lifetime, you know. All he had to do was string up Eric's guitars and stuff. What would you say was your worst show and your best show? You know, I wouldn't remember. say anyone was the worst or or the best. They were all great. Uh, you could hear people like at the Kiel Auditorium. Uh, uh, you could hear them talking when we, because we didn't have little tune-up things. You know, we didn't have tuning machines. It was like tuned by ear. No, 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 no. And uh, you could hear the audience like well, actually one one said, "Get the fuck on with it!" Yelling at Eric. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there wasn't really a bad show. There was only one show that it got a little bit unnerving, and that was uh, the last, the second night in uh, New York at Fillmore East. Uh, Eric did a, a lot of heroin that night, and we just didn't know if he was going to be coming in or not, you know, on the, when it come time to come back. Uh, mean old world or something like it. Mean old world. You got to live it all by yourself. Da, 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 da. And uh, it would be like, is he coming in? Carl and Jim and I just stayed on it. <laughs> and then we didn't know. And then it, it, it's a mean old world. And, I mean, he would just barely come in. And it was like staggered. Everything was staggered. Uh, I'm sure all that will come out. It's out in the, on the uh, bootlegs, you know, but. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I'd forgotten about that one until I heard it myself. But uh, yeah, I remember that night real well. I remember everything, you know. Even stuff that I shouldn't remember, I remember. 